Hi, Daily Church. It's Jordan. Hey, I hope you have a wonderful and blessed day today. Today, we're opening our Bibles to Luke chapter 2. We're going to be discovering about experiencing God's presence. Maybe you want to experience God's presence for this new year and this new day that you're living. Well, today, we're going to be finding more about how you can experience God in your life today. Today, I hope you will experience God as we hear this amazing message. You know, if you're a Daily Church, our vision for you is simple. It's to help develop and deploy you into the ministry. And one of the ways that we do this is to help you start a daily church. If you're watching church today from all over the world, stick around. We've got some great, uh, great message for you today. It's going to bless your life. Well, today, if you have your Bible, open it right now to Luke chapter 2. And let's learn about encountering God's presence. We believe when you know Jesus Christ, everything changes. Daily Church helps people grow daily in their relationship with God. Welcome to daily.church. Encountering God's presence. You know, every person is looking for something. They're searching, right? What are they looking for? Well, I guarantee you they're looking to experience God's presence. That's right. You know how great it is to experience someone's presence that you truly love? And maybe it's a relationship. Maybe it's your family, right? And when you're in their presence, there's joy. There's just life, right, in general. But how much more would it be for you and I to experience the presence, the love, the grace of God in our life? This is the promise that God has for us. And he wants us, God wants us to encounter him. But sadly today, many people are searching for this presence. They're searching for this relationship that they cannot find because it only comes through one person, and that is the Messiah, Jesus Christ. That's right. When you know Jesus, everything in your life changes, and you will experience God's presence. My hope for you today is that you would find a relationship with God and experience God's presence today in your life. Today, if you have God in your life, I want you to experience even more of God's presence today in your life. And today we'll be finding this out, how you can embrace God's presence in your life. You know, we're looking in the Bible here in Luke 2, and the background is simply, this was this is the beginning of the story of the Messiah, that Jesus Christ would be born a baby in Bethlehem, a promised Savior would come, and, and he would come to grow up and teach people about heaven, teach people about how to come into uh, heaven. And then one day he would give his life up as a ransom for many and die and, and on a cross. And that would end the, the, the gospel of Luke. But in Luke 2, we see some powerful things happening as Jesus' birth is depicted in Bethlehem. And we're going to be reading about this today. But today, the message is simply encountering God's presence. And today, let's pray before we begin. Dear God, we thank you for this day. We thank you that you are here with us and that you want to speak to us. And I pray that every person here today would hear your voice, that they would physically, tangibly experience your presence and your power in their life today, wherever they are. We pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right, my friends. Well, let's get into it. If you have your Bibles, turn with me right now to Luke chapter 2, and we'll be learning about experiencing God's presence. Number one, truth number one is this. We can seek out the Savior. We can seek out the Savior. Today, people are pursuing a lot of different things, but many people are missing the greatest hope that they can experience in this life, and that is the Savior that has come. The Savior and his name is Jesus. Today, let me ask you this. Are you currently seeking Jesus in your life? Are you currently seeking Jesus? Many today here would say, no, I'm currently pursuing my job. I'm, I'm uh, currently pursuing my career path in life. I'm uh, I'm trying to find the right one to marry, or I'm trying to build a family, or I'm trying to get to this level in my life, or do this amazing journey, or whatever it is. There's so many different things that you can seek in this life. But to, today, I want you to think about, are you seeking Jesus? Today, many people aren't searching for Jesus, but Jesus is searching for you today. He's seeking you out to save you, but he wants you to seek him and see and find his hope that he has for you. I think about, you know, the wise men in Matthew 2, verse 1 through 2. You know, they were they've they saw this, they saw this light, they saw this this star in heaven, and they followed the star to find the Messiah because they were waiting for this hope. They were waiting. They sought the constellations to, for a sign of a savior that would be born. And these were wise men because they knew that they were living in the time of the Messiah, the birth of the Messiah. And so they were waiting in expectation for that which would come. And God sent them a sign, a star that they would follow. And these wise men traveled to find the Messiah. They were seeking 
the Savior. Today, we can seek the Savior too. Let's read right now Luke 2, 15 through 16 about what had happened with these wise men. Let's read about it. It says this, When the angel had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let, uh, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in a manger. See, these wise men were told about the Messiah. They said the Lord had told them um, about this. And think about that. Maybe God spoke to these wise men in dreams. Maybe they spoke to the, the maybe God spoke to the wise men in, in scriptures and the Torah. Whatever way, God was speaking to them. But guess what? They were, they were answering the call to seek out God. And they had, they, an angel had encountered them as they were traveling. And they say, we must go to this Messiah. We must go to Bethlehem and find this Savior. So my friend, seeking God requires us to do something, right? We have the Bible. We have uh, this hope. But are we seek, seeking God out every day in our life? Are we encountering God? My friend, if you want to encounter God, it means you have to leave the place where you are to seek out something that's even greater in your life. Are you, what are you leaving behind to find God in your life? Maybe there's things in your life that are holding you back, your sins, your past, um, your distractions that are keeping you from this relationship. What are those things in your life that are keeping you from encountering God? My friend, the greatest thing we can do is to actively seek God in our life. And when we do this, everything in our life changes. My friend, when I wake up every day and I pray, I start seeking God. The first thing I do when I wake up, God, I need you. I need you in my life. Where are you? I'm seeking you. Show up in my life today. At some point, show me, lead me, speak to me. That's my prayer every day. And that's a person that is seeking after God. Maybe that's you today. Maybe you wake up. Maybe you're going throughout your day and you're thinking about God. You're saying, God, what, what opportunity do you have for me to share the love of God with someone? What, what is the person that's waiting to hear a message? That it was what it looks like to actively seek out God in your daily life. Today, that's you. if that's you, congratulations. You've made it. You've arrived. But guess what? God has even greater things for those that seek him out. Today, would you be a person that actively seeks Jesus through your life? And make that an urgency thing in your life. Make that priority number one before you do anything else that you seek out in this life. And when you do this, your life is going to be blessed. I guarantee it. Well, let's move on to truth number two. Truth number two in Luke 2 is this. We can embrace God's revelation. We can embrace God's revelation of who he is. We can embrace God's revelation of who he is. You know, many people today are searching for God. They're searching for answers that they cannot find, but they're searching in all the wrong places. But they're believing maybe one day that they will find God. But the good news is this, that Jesus Christ came into this world as a baby, right, born in Bethlehem. These wise men are seeking him out, but he was born to give us the revelation of who God is. You know, Jesus Christ is the image of the invisible God. That's right. If we want to know who God is or what he looks like or, or the revelation of who he is, we, have, we just have to look to his son, Jesus. We look at Jesus and we can see the love of God, the forgiveness of God, the hope of God, the peace of God, a God that is wanting a relationship with us, a God who is actively pursuing us, a God who is willing to lay down and sacrifice his life because he loves us. This is the God that we have. This is the God that gives us this revelation of who he is, and it comes through Jesus. And as we read the, the story of Jesus that we're reading here today, I, I pray that you will see a fuller picture of who God is in your life. I think of the people that have that are that had a revelation. One of the people in the Bible is a prophet named Elijah, and he was hiding in a cave in Mount Herob, Her and he was he was hiding from the persecution that he was suffering right at this moment. And and the Lord appears to to uh, Elijah in this cave and speaks to him. And Elijah hears the voice of God. And you know what uh, uh, God said to Elijah? It says this uh, in 1 Kings 19, 9 through 13. It says, And the word of the Lord came to him. What are you doing here, Elijah? What are you doing? And so this, is, this shows us that God is actively involved in our lives, just like he is Elijah's life. But he was giving them him revelation. Hey, you, you don't have to hide here. You can go out and be victorious. 
because I am on your side. What are you doing hiding in this cave? You don't need to be hiding here. Go out. I've given you the victory. Prove to the world that you live in that I am God and I am with you. And that's what Elijah ended up doing. Remember uh, from this, you know, Elijah ends up calling fire from heaven and sh proving who the real God is. And this is the revelation that Elijah had, and he was able to show it to the world. Today, there is a revelation of God that has come into this world, and his name is Jesus. And I want to share with you in Luke 2, 25 through 32, as we read the Bible about this revelation that has come. Now it says this, Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, who was r religious, or righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolidation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was on him. And it had be, been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Well, so here's a man named Simeon, and he's in the specific time, a specific place that God had placed him in for a revelation of who Jesus is. Now, uh, you know, this is the son, the Messiah that was promised, and God promised him that he would not die until he sees the Messiah, until he sees a picture of who God is, right, in the flesh and blood. And so he was waiting for, the, for, for Jesus to show up on the scene, prompted and led by the Holy Spirit. And what, guess what? When he saw the birth of Jesus, he saw this baby that was born, a Savior, the Messiah that would come, the ruling, reigning king one day, that would come. And guess what? He saw that. And he said, God answered my promise. God answered his promise. He answered my prayer. And he showed me who the Messiah was. And I bet you when he looked into that child, baby Jesus, guess what? He saw God face to face. Isn't that amazing? Can you imagine seeing God face to face? Well, when you look into the face of Jesus, you see God face to face. And that's what Simeon saw. So he had a revelation of, of God. And so divine revelation comes from us waiting in faith. God's revelation comes to us sometimes as we wait in faith. Remember, think of all, the whole life that Simeon had to wait for this Messiah to come. He was waiting his whole life. The, you know, the wise men were waiting for this Messiah. The Simeon, Simeon was waiting for this Messiah to come. They were waiting in faith. And guess what? They were waiting for a divine revelation of who God was. And they saw him for the first time. The wise men saw him for the first time. Simeon saw it him for the first time. And this was the Savior, the one who's promised. You know, I want you to know this today, that you can remain uh, steadfast in the promises of God. And when you do, God, expect God to give you a revelation. And guess what? God already has given us the revelation of who he is. When we read the words of the Bible, we hear the voice of God. We see who Jesus is. You know, many people in this world are waiting for the Bible to be translated into their language because they want to hear the revelation of Jesus. My friend, guess what? This is the good news. You, if you've encountered Jesus through his word, you get to now share it with other people. You get to go out to the highways and the byways, the people who are waiting for the revelation of who God is, and you can tell them it. Just like we're reading the Bible today, you can read the Bible in your home, uh, you know, on the street corner with someone else, and you can give someone a revelation of who Jesus is. You know, people are waiting to hear the revelation of Jesus. Today, I hope that this helps you and that you will share this revelation with others. Amen? All right, last truth of Luke 2 is this. We can grow in understanding of God. We can grow in our understanding of God. You know, spiritual maturity is a, a key part of the Christian life. You know, as a Christian, as a believer, your goal is to keep growing in your knowledge of God. And, and God is infinite, right? And we can never fully grasp everything about God in heaven. Many people think it's going to be boring, but it's actually going to be very exciting because we're going to learn more and more every day of our life in heaven about who God is. There's, there's, so, there's an endless revelation of who God is, and, and that's what we're going to be encountering in heaven. And this is what we encounter even right now. Every time I read this Bible, I've read the same verse over and over again many, many times. But guess what? Every time I read it, something new comes out. God speaks to me in a whole new way and shows me a new part of who he is. And this is what it means. As God, as we read the scriptures, God is unveiling his glory. He's unveiling who he is. Remember the disciples? They walk with Jesus, but slowly he unveiled who he was to them. They didn't fully understand it. They couldn't grasp it. And I remember the story of the disciples on the road to Emmaus. It's found in Luke 24, 13 through 35, if you want to read it. But remember, Jesus encountered these men. They were searching the, the scriptures at that time, probably reading the Torah, 
learning about this Messiah who had come. Who is he? What's he, what's he going to do? What's it all about? And here Jesus shows up and says, hey, guys, this is what it's about. As your scriptures foretold, this is what would happen. I would come and I would die on a cross for the forgiveness of your sins. And guess what? They saw God in a whole new way. They had a revelation of him, but they grew in their maturity in him. And then uh, they got excited and started sharing uh, Jesus with everyone. But the cool thing is that they were growing in their relationship with God. They were growing in spiritual revelation and maturity and understanding of who God is. Today, let's read about this in Jesus' life, Luke 2, um, 40, and also 46 through 47. It says this, And the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was on him. After three days, they found him in the temple court, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. Everyone who heard him was amazed at his understanding and his answers. You see this? Jesus here is teaching people about who God is. People at the time that Jesus was living had a very little revelation of who God was. And here Jesus is growing in his understanding, but sharing the knowledge of God with others. You see, growing requires time. And this is the hard thing about growing, right? It requires time. I think about Jesus. He had his whole life that he lived. And then three years, he had only did ministry for three years. Think about that. Yeah, your whole life, he lived this amazing life. And then in three years, he did ministry. And then he went to the cross. But think about that. He was growing in relationships with others. He was, you know, uh, getting to know people. And, and he also was growing up, right? He had growing up to do here in this world. But guess what? God's grace was upon him. God gave him the wisdom and understanding. And he was a teacher and he taught his disciples. He taught the people that were in the synagogues. And so guess what? Today, what this means is that you and I can commit to growing. Just like Jesus was committed to coming to this, into this world, living a perfect life that we can never live, dying on a cross, right? That took days upon days, years upon years, months upon months, but he committed to growing. He committed to being here and showing up. And he did an amazing work on the cross. And he had a great, amazing ministry where he raised up these 12 disciples who went out. And guess what? We're still reading the Bible today because of them. We're reading their letters. We're reading Luke, right? And so we're learning about these people. But they had to grow, and we have to grow too. And so today, I want you to commit your life today to grow spiritually, to grow in the knowledge of who God is, and to seek God for his wisdom. Today, if you do this, you're going to be a blessed person. You're going to be able to know the knowledge of God and also teach it to others just like Jesus did. Today, I hope that this moment you've encountered the presence of God as we've read the Word of God. And I hope that today you'll continue reading the Gospel of Luke. You know, today's message was encountering God's presence. And in this message, we've learned three powerful truths. Number one, we can seek out the Savior. Number two, we can embrace God's revelation of who He is in our life. And we can grow in our understanding of God. Well, today, if you want to know God, just like Simeon and the wise men, they saw Jesus face to face today. You can see God. You can see God. And one day you can encounter his love and his presence uh, forever in a, in a place called heaven. And you'll have a home there. But today you have a decision to make. Are you going to give him your life? Are you going to turn from your sin and your shame and the path that you're headed down? And are you going to turn and put yourself on God's plan and on his and put your, put your life in his hands. Today, guess what Jesus did? He came to be the Messiah. He came humbly. And guess what? He came to die on a cross for our sins so we can be forgiven. And the Bible says that everyone who believes in him will not die but have eternal life in John 3, 16. Would you like to give God your life today? Would you like to enter into his grace? Would you like to enter into God's presence and his peace in your life? If you do, I want to invite you right now to pray with me as we invite Jesus into our life as we live for him. This, at this moment. So let's pray right now wherever you are. To God, I thank you for this day. I thank you that, God, you are so good. And I, I'm not perfect, but you are. You lived the perfect life that I could never live. But you, and you also died for all of my sins so I can be forgiven. Today, I ask you to forgive me. I'm a sinner who needs your forgiveness today. Would you come into my life? Would you make me new? 
Would you clean me up, Lord, my messed up life? I give it to you. Today, I pray that you'd fill me with your Holy Spirit. Lead me, guide me, speak to me. And I pray that your presence would be filled, would fill my life every single day. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen, my friends. Well, if you prayed that prayer, I want to say welcome to the family of God. Your sins are forgiven. You now are a new person, a new creation, the Bible talks about. And guess what? The best news of all, you have a relationship with God that will last forever, but you also have a home in heaven that will last forever too. I hope that this message has blessed you today. If you can, encounter God's presence every day, but also tell someone else about Jesus today. Wouldn't you do that for me? That would be great. All right, my friend, have a great day, and we'll see you next week right here at Daily Church. God bless. Join us as we take the good news of Jesus Christ to every nation. Now is the time to give to your local church and support your pastor. Every donation you give goes to supporting your church. Your giving helps us reach more people for Christ as we start new daily churches together. Thank you for your support. God bless.